we're on a new subject now. We're on the subject of cells. So we're getting closer to humans, aren't we? Um, as far as uh, scientists have been able to even imagine or theorize, we believe that every form of life that we might run into in the universe would be found in the form of cells. And why is that? Well, let me give you an analogy. Let's imagine that you are going to go ahead and put a city on the moon. No, let's put it on Mars, okay? We're gonna put a city on Mars, right? If you were gonna put a city on Mars, what would be kind of step number one? You probably would put like a great big dome on some part of Mars so that you could fill that dome up with oxygen and keep that area warm enough with enough oxygen for humans to live in your city, right? And why would you do that? Why would you not just, hey, let's just warm up all of Mars? Well, it's too hard to warm up an entire planet. So you would probably go up there and put up a dome. Well, putting up a dome is like creating a cell membrane and everything on the inside would be the living cell and everything on the outside would be just the uh, environment. So here on planet Earth, if you wanna be a living cell, you wanna be something tiny so you can control what's inside of you. You don't want to try to organize and control all of planet Earth or all of the Pacific Ocean. So we think that every living organism, not just here on planet Earth, but anywhere we might run into life, should be made out of something like a cell. Now, we're going to learn the different parts of a theoretical cell, right? However, the kind of cell we're going to be learning about is going to look like a, like a, like a ball, but almost no human cells, when you look at them through the microscope, almost none of them are little balls like the theoretical cell we're going to look at. Like. Like, why? Because cells are not just there to be alive. Cells that are floating in the ocean by themselves, okay, they could be round, maybe, even they're not round that often, all right? But the cells in the human body, they are muscle cells, or they are skin cells, or they are nerve cells. And so they're not little round bags of salt water at all. Um, they are different from each other. And we're gonna study some of that difference in our next topic, which is tissues or histology. But right now, just keep that in mind while we learn the different parts of a cell. Out of the different things that we're going to learn about, not every cell has every one of these little parts of a cell that are called organelles. Oh, why is it that all of these cells that we're looking at here all of the ones we're looking at here, nerve cells, skin cells, they all have the exact same DNA. They all have the same genes. They all have the same instructions inside of them. Why do they look so different? And that's because different cells will use different parts of the library of instructions that are your genes. And doing that is called differentiation. We'll talk about it. Now, whenever I think about human cells, I think of that our human cells are like really busy factories, not just factories, but like factory complexes on Mars, okay? Factory complexes on Mars. If we're gonna put this factory complex here on Mars, and it's gonna be making, I don't know, robots and iPhones, okay? So what is the first step? The first step is we're going to need to enclose that area that's going to hold our factory so that we can keep all of our workers alive. Now, <clears throat> the dome that surrounds the living part of a cell is known as the plasma membrane or the cell membrane. We're not going to distinguish between the two. Plasma membrane or cell membrane. And the plasma membrane or cell membrane is the boundary between the living part of the cell, which is that membrane inward, and everything on the outside of that membrane that is a non-living part of the environment. Um, the cell membrane, and maybe you should write this down, the cell membrane controls 
what goes into the cell and what comes out of the cell. That's being controlled by the cell membrane. Now, if cell membrane or plasma membrane seems familiar, like, hey, I've heard of that before. You have, because when we were doing chemistry, we learned that this lovely molecule, the phospholipid, is that written here? Oh, no. Here it is, phospholipid. The phospholipid is the molecule that creates the basic structure that is the cell membrane. Phospholipids arrange themselves spontaneously into these bilayers. So remember, um, the phospholipid is a lot like a triglyceride, except for the glycerol, instead of having one, two, three fatty acids attached to it, like um, a triglyceride, it has two fatty acids plus a polar group of phosphate. Um, they always call these tails, and the tails, to me, they look like legs, okay? But these tails are nonpolar, which means they don't like water, which means they are hydrophobic, don't like water. And this head end is hydrophilic, and that makes these molecules, phospholipids, amphipathic. And just because they're amphipathic, they magically arrange themselves into this structure that is an entirely fluid yet also entirely stable cell membrane. Now, the phospholipid bilayer is not the entire cell membrane, but it is the foundation for the cell membrane. So the cell membrane, where was that? There we go. Whoops. There we go. The cell membrane controls the movement materials into and out of the cell. So here it is. This is going to be the phospholipid bilayer. So this is the base of you've got your dome around your factory complex that you're setting up. And there are some things that are not allowed to go across your dome. For example, you'd want to make sure that the oxygen all stays inside of your dome. So you would make this dome out of material that did not allow oxygen to go across, all right. Um, on the other hand, there are some things you do want to be able to go across your dome, like sunlight. You'd like the sunlight to be able to get in so you don't need to have so many electric lights, right? So the phospholipid bilayer is like that. We call that quality selective permeability. What does selective permeability mean? It just means some molecules are allowed to go across that membrane and other molecules are not allowed to go across the membrane. Specifically, what can go across the membrane? Small molecules that are nonpolar, okay? Small to medium, they don't, they don't have to be super small. Small to medium molecules that are nonpolar. What are nonpolar molecules? Nonpolar molecules are molecules that don't like to dissolve in water, but they do don't like to dissolve in fat. Where's the fat? These fatty acid legs of our phospholipid bilayer. So things that can go straight across for the cell membrane, oxygen can go across and carbon dioxide, CO2, carbon dioxide, and other small nonpolar molecules like some hormones. For example, testosterone, actually not that small a molecule, walks right across that cell membrane like it ain't even there because it is hydrophobic, it is nonpolar. So nonpolar things, if they're small enough, they can go straight across. Uh, what cannot go across? Things that are hydrophilic don't, don't go across readily. So glucose, glucose is a monosaccharide. It's actually much smaller than a testosterone, but it can't go across. Why? Because it is a polar molecule. Things that are polar dissolve well in water, but will not dissolve in these hydrophobic tails that make up that middle portion of the phospholipid bilayer. Here's another surprising thing. These things that are ions are very small. How small are they? They are single atoms, a sodium atom. So glucose is like 12, 24 atoms big. Sodium, that is one atom. It cannot go across, boom, can't go across. Why? Because it is an ion, it has a charge. So things like sodium, potassium, calcium chloride, 
they are charged when they're in a water solution and they can't go across. Even hydrogen, which now you know, hydrogen is just a single naked proton that cannot go across. Now, this is weird, right? Because glucose, the cell does want things to go across. Let's go back to our analogy about the factory complex. The factory complex has got a dome around it, but there are some things that can go across a dome like sunlight, some things that can't like oxygen, but hey, we need to get people into it and we need to bring cargoes of raw materials into the factory complex and we need to be able to take cargoes of finished product out of the factory complex. So what are we gonna do? We're going to put in doors. We're gonna put in special doors into our dome on Mars in the factory complex. Those special doors in the cell membrane are made out of proteins. We haven't talked too much about proteins yet, but you should already know I'm a fanatic about proteins. I hate it when they get drawn as lumps because they're not lumps, they're tunnels and machines and they're incredible things. So these particular little proteins that are found in the phospholipid bilayer, a lot of them are special doors some will allow only glucose to go through. Some will allow larger things to go through. Some will only allow sodium and potassium to go across, all right? So the starting point for the cell membrane is the phospholipid bilayer, but on top of that, there are lots of proteins, actually many more than this, embedded in it to allow the cell membrane to control what goes in and what goes out through the use of these proteins, All right? We will talk about this subject more in the next video.